Hello everyone, it's Mrs. Dergu, and today we're going to talk about careers in the theater. Many of you want to explore acting, but there are many people out there who just don't want to be in front of an audience. And so I want to explore those different careers. So before we begin, you know what we're going to do. We're going to get focused. Put away anything that might distract you, your phone, uh, your turn off your TV, and get comfortable. And let's start by rolling our neck and our shoulders and kind of loosening up and start with some deep breaths. Everybody take a deep breath in through your nose. Letting it out again in through your nose. Letting it out through your mouth. This should help you relax a little bit. It's really important to do that when we're learning from a video. Okay, I don't want anybody to get tense. One more time, take a deep breath in through your nose letting it out through your mouth. Okay, so our objectives today are to explore career and a vocational opportunities in the theater. I want you to be able to demonstrate an understanding of all aspects of theater production, including acting, directing, design, technical jobs, publicity. So I also want you to develop and complete a culminating project. It doesn't have to be a senior thesis project, but a theatrical design project, which we'll get to in the end. Why is this important? Wait, but why? Well, theater offers many opportunities other than acting, and in many cases, those other careers are where money is made. You might find something that you really enjoy. If you like your beginning theater class or even your advanced theater class, but you're realizing that acting just isn't for you, maybe you're a great publicist or maybe you're a great costumer. So we're going to explore that. This is also going to help you as you begin to see where theater fits into your life. Because even if you don't choose theater as a career, there is always room for some type of theater in your life. So let's talk about the top dog, the producer. The producer oversees all of the production and ensures that everything runs smoothly. He acts as the business manager of the production and is therefore in charge of creating and following a budget. The producer finds the money, right? He does fundraising. He sets performance dates and times and ticket prices, marketing and publicizing the show. And if you look at the little image there, I have the day in the life of the producer. He hires a production staff, raises money for a budget. He approves production changes. He monitors post-production processes. Uh, especially in the world of film. All right, the next, let's talk about the director. The director controls all of the artistic elements of the show. She or he is responsible for running the audition, casting the show, blocking or staging all the scenes, coaching the actors on line delivery and helping with character development. And the director is responsible for developing the concept behind the play and being able to explain it to other members of the artistic staff. The director has full artistic control and he has the last word, unless the producer steps in. The stage manager is one of the most important and highest paid careers out there. The stage manager is in charge of scheduling, giving cues, taking notes, and communicating with the cast and designers during the rehearsal period. During the show, the stage manager is responsible for overseeing each performance. Now, in high school, the director is always there. But in the professional world, the director comes in and directs. And once the show is finished being put together, the director leaves and the stage manager takes over. He's in charge or she's in charge of every scene change and is expected to be sure that all the actors are where they need to be at all times. The stage manager is always listened to and respected because he or she is in charge of everything after the projection begins. In the professional world, the stage manager's control is absolute once the show is up and on its feet. The music director. Most shows have a music director, whether that be to teach music to singers for a musical 
or to come up with music that's going to be used in the play. The music director is responsible for working with both the cast and the musicians who will be playing in an orchestra for a musical. He or she interprets the music and helps guide the director and choreographer by suggesting changes in the music or places where the music should be lengthened or cut shorter. The music director's job includes scheduling rehearsal accompaniments and hiring the pit orchestra, the group of musicians who play during the actual performance, and the music director's in charge of rehearsing the music with both the cast and the orchestra. Then we have a choreographer. The choreographer is the movement expert. Not only musicals have a choreographer. For example, the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime has a choreographer because that show is full of movement. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child has a choreographer. Although the show doesn't include a lot of dance, it includes much movement. At the Globe Theater in London, there is a woman named Glenn McDonald, and her job is called Master of Movement. That would be an incredible job, but she's much like a choreographer. She is the movement expert. She's responsible for reading through the script, listening to the show's music, and developing movement and gestures that combine to create the show's dances. The choreographer is generally responsible for creating dance sequences and teaching them to the cast and rehearsing them. Here she is often responsible for adding gestural movement to scenes and helping to block crowd scenes. Every musical moment in a show has a choreographer. They must make sure that the acting can be conveyed through the selected movements and dance and the cast members are able to sing while dancing. Therefore, she or he must work closely with the director and the music director. All three of those jobs, the director, the music director, and the choreographer in a musical must work closely together to make sure they all have the same vision. Next, we have the technical director. Now, technical directors can be both men and women, for those of you who did not know, but a technical director oversees all the technical aspects of a production. She or he works closely with the director to help create the mood of the production and be sure that the actors will be safe, seen, and heard. He or she is responsible for hiring scenic designers, lighting designers, and sound designers. The scenic designer is responsible for creating the set, works closely with the lighting designer who designs the lighting and creates the mood and directs the audience's attention to where the focus needs to be on stage. The sound designer is responsible, responsible for being certain that the performers and musicians can be heard and that sound is balanced in the theater and that all the necessary sound effects are in place. There's a lot of different kinds of designers that the technical theater director must oversee. So the designers are the people who develop and create costume, lights, set, makeup for a play or TV show or a movie. So you have a set designer, a costume designer, a lighting designer, a sound designer, and a prop designer. Let's go through those. The set designer, obviously, is someone who is in charge of designing and creating sets for films, television, and theater. Sets are the physical surroundings in which all of the action takes place for production. They often work with directors and producers and costume designers and other crew members to make sure that everyone is on the same page and the director's vision is coming to fruition. The costume designer or wardrobe manager and makeup supervisor could all be one person or three. A wardrobe or makeup supervisor oversees the areas of both costume and makeup and hair. Responsibilities could include rehearsing the musical, meeting with the director and choreographer, and working with the costume designer to ensure that costumes work well in the scene and match the vision, um, determining what type of makeup will be used, measuring the actors, and making sure that the costumes fit, and being certain that all the costumes are laundered and ironed and ready for the dress rehearsal and performance. He or she is also responsible for the storage of costumes and the physical transportation of them to and from the theater. The lighting designer, as we touched on late earlier, is the person who works with the director, choreographer, and set designer to make sure that the lighting is appropriate and gives focus where it needs to be. 
The sound designer is responsible for obtaining all the sound effects, whether they're recorded or live, and is responsible for setting up a sound playback equipment. We use QLab, and a lot of schools are using QLab because we can set all of our music and sound effects into one program and just hit go. But they also make sure that the soundboard operator is properly trained and the sound design is an acoustic component of a production. You must have a good sound design to make sure that everything works um, in conjunction with each other. Properties or props. Now you have prop designers and prop masters, so let's talk about both. A prop designer is a person who designs props in the theater, film, or television. Prop designers work in liaison with costume designers and set designers and sound designers under the direction of the art, artistic director, or technical director. Sometimes you can buy props, sometimes you can rent props, sometimes you have to make props. The property master or prop master, as we call it in high school, is the artistic and organizational employee of a film, television, or theater production. And that person is responsible for purchasing or acquiring, manufacturing, properly placing and overseeing that all the props are where they're supposed to be for the show. Most of the time, your prop master is the one who fixes things that are broken, make sure that the props are set before the show starts, and make sure that they're put back on a prop table or a central location after the show is finished. The house manager is the most important career or job in the theater when it pertains to an audience. The stage manager is in charge of everything that happens backstage, but the house manager is in charge of everything that happens on the other side of the curtain. He or she is responsible for the box office and everything that happens in the lobby, um, everything that happens in the audience, and in charge of custodians. They hire and oversee people to run the box office, to act as ushers, and sell souvenirs or refreshments in the lobby. So anytime a problem arises in the audience, such as a dispute over a seat or a loud, disruptive audience member, the house manager is called to resolve the issue. Stage crew. Backstage or technical crew are responsible for running the show. They change scenery, they open and close the curtain, they run the lighting, they run the sound. Dramaturg. Now this is a job that many um, schools don't use, but this is a very important job. A dramaturg or dramaturg is a literary advisor or editor in theater, opera, or film. They research, they select, adapt, edit, interpret scripts at libretti. Um, they look at text and print programs. They help others with all of these tasks. They are truly consultants with the author, and they do work with public relations. So, for example, one time we were doing a play that had a nun in it, and we had a student who was our dramaturg, and his responsibility, because this play took place in 1950, was to research what kind of nun and what kind of habit this nun would wear. And so he had to go through and he would advise us on our costume and advise us on what that nun, that nun would wear and carry and how that nun would pray. Every show needs a dramaturg because that person is the historical reference that brings specificity to your play and makes it truly believable in its time period. The playwright, obviously this is a career in theater, and everyone knows that a playwright is the person who writes the play, but we need more women playwrights out there. I'm just saying that. Um, I don't think that anyone would disagree with me. We have many playwrights throughout history, um, from Shakespeare to Tennessee Williams or Arthur Miller or Leonard and Lowe, but we do need more women playwrights like Jane Martin and Lorraine Hansberry. But a playwright um, has to be a person who loves words and loves telling stories. Obviously, being in the ensemble is a career. There are some people who live as ensemble members, and that's the group of artists working together to create the performance, singing and dancing on stage. Not necessarily the lead actor and, or actresses, but those who help tell the story.
all of the animals in Lion King, all of the background people in the color purple. And then obviously actors and actresses, these are male and female performers in the role of a play or a movie or a TV show. Many of us want to be an actor or an actress, but we're not going to be able to fulfill that career because 98% of all actors or actresses are unemployed, meaning that's not how they make their main living. I'm an actor, but I teach as my main job, and I get to do acting on the side. I know many people who love to do costuming but began as music directors or actors that began as actors and went on to directing and producing. Okay, so let's review with a hierarchy chart. This chart is from Broadway World, and it is kind of complicated, but it does tell you all of the jobs and careers in the theater, starting with the producer to the production manager and director, all the way down to the costumer and the technical director. And then you have everything like a master painter, master electrician, master carpenter, sound engineer, props master, all of these things are careers. You've got careers in performance, careers in design, and careers in tech. So let's review. There are many people that work together to put on a show. A, a show is a collaborative effort, and all theater jobs are essential. There is not one that is more important than the other. Without all of the careers and jobs that we have in theater, you couldn't have theater like we know it. There's something for everyone in the theater. If you like to draw, you might be good at design. If you love tinkering with music, you might love sound design. There's something for everyone. So my question is, what career interests you? I'd like you to think about that. Think about what career interests you. If you had your choice to be anything that we've gone over today, what would it be? If it's an actor, I challenge you to choose a secondary choice. In the production world, what career would you choose? Here are some references that I use to find information from today. Basic Drama Projects, The Stage in School, BroadwayEducators.com, and HumanKinetics.com. So you can feel free to go to those um, if you need help. Thank you for joining this lesson today. I encourage you to think about careers in the theater, and you can explore um, broadwayworld.com or Broadway Careers and find different careers and how much those people make. I challenge you to check it out. Have a great day.